Good morning and welcome to Enniskill in Worship at Home. We are so pleased that you have joined us. You are so welcome. We've had some beautiful time of opening worship and we look forward to being able to share an even more worship as we worship Jesus our Lord. We're going to sing together, All Heaven Declares. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together? As you walk along, they stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us, that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over, so he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them.
Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. I want to focus on the last part of this story, the story of the journey to Emmaus from Jerusalem by these two disciples of Jesus. I don't want to, to focus this morning on why they didn't recognize Jesus. I just want to focus on the fact that as they were walking along, along came this man. For some reason, their eyes were closed to who he was. And yet he spoke of the truth. He pointed them to the truth and they got excited at that reality. And so there's something in that conversation that sparked the desire to invite him to stay with them. Jesus made his way as if he was going on when they arrived at Emmaus, but they said, no, 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 stay with us. Stay with us, the night is drawing in, so please stay with us. And the scripture says, Luke tells us that he went in to stay with them. The word stay there is in the Greek, because the New Testament was written in the Greek, is the same word that we find in John's gospel when John writes of remaining and dwelling and abiding in Jesus, particularly in the famous chapter of John chapter 15, where Jesus talks about us remaining and abiding and dwelling in the vine. It speaks of being at home. It speaks of a relationship of love and rest that doesn't have to seek to approve or get approval or win approval or work. It is resting in our relationship with God and that same word that remain that dwell they're saying Jesus will you come and remain with us will you come and stay with us even though they don't necessarily recognize who it is at the moment there's something about this man they want him to dwell with us dwell with them and so they invite him to come and stay with them they invite him to come and remain with them and it's just beautiful words and Jesus went in to stay 
with them. And as they sat down for a meal, probably prepared for them since before, before they had arrived, Jesus uh, broke tradition. He wasn't the host, but he was the one who took the bread and he went to break it. And in that mundane act, the eyes of these disciples were opened. They recognized Jesus in the everyday moment and their eyes were opened. And I always felt sorry for them as a, as a child, I was growing up and hearing this story that at that moment, Jesus disappeared. And it was like, well, you're not gonna stay with your friends. You're not gonna have a conversation. Of course, it had a whole conversation on the journey from Jerusalem. But in that moment, Jesus disappeared. And I felt really sorry for them. But I, I, as I've grown up, I've come to understand that the way Jesus sometimes does things is, is not the way we do things. And anyway, the resurrection appearance of Jesus to these two disciples had made more of an impact than if he just stayed with them and had a cup of coffee after the meal because they had experienced burning hearts. And that, friends, is the possibility and joy of resurrection for us, the resurrection for us, that as Jesus comes along beside us, as you join us on our Sundays and you hear something of the truth and something within you begins to chime, something within you begins to to say this, this, there's truth in this, there's fire in this, there's love in this, there's something in these words of Jesus that just attracts me. And uh, Jesus never forces himself upon people. So Jesus, there'll come a point where, where Jesus will begin to go one way and we go the other way. And it's at that moment that we have an opportunity to say, Jesus, Jesus, stay with us. Don't go on, stay with us. Come and remain with us, dwell with us. And willingly he comes and he chooses to remain with us. And then life takes on something different because in the everyday, in the mundane, we can experience his presence and know him for who he is. Because when we, when we talk to God, when we talk to Jesus, talk to the Spirit, they're not up there, they're, they're here, in here by the presence of the Spirit in our lives. Jesus is a reality. And so we can know Jesus in the every day, in the every moment. We may not physically see him with our eyes, but like these two disciples, we can find Jesus in the, in the insignificant things as well as in the great worship within the cathedrals and the churches and the prayer meetings. We can find Jesus through the pages of the Bible, but when we find him, we know it is him and there is a burning in our hearts. And the burning in the hearts of these two disciples following this resurrection experience has caused them, experienced, caused them to jump up and immediately, remember it's nighttime, to run back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples, never mind the danger of robbers along the way or potential problems with animals along this route in the darkness. They ran straight back, their hearts were aflame because they had met with the risen Jesus. Uh, the last book in the Bible, the book of Revelation, for many people it's a bit of a strange book and we haven't got time to explore that now, but there's this beautiful picture in Revelation chapter 3 and it became the basis for a very well-known picture called The Light of the World by um, Holman Hunt and in this picture within the scripture we find Jesus he says this here I stand knocking at the door if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I will come in and he and I will eat Together. Now, Jesus is speaking specifically here to his people within the church. Often that's been used as a, an, an invitation for people to come to know Jesus. And yes, that is true. But it's an invitation for all of us, all of us, to invite Jesus to come and abide with us, to come and dwell with us. He invites us into his love and into his life as we invite him to come and be part of our lives. This morning, I want to invite you to give the risen Christ the invitation to come and stay, to dwell, to remain with you, to become part of your life, part of your everyday life, the mundane as well as the glorious, and to invite him to set your hearts on fire. We're going to uh, sing Bolo's On now, a little chorus. Some of you will know this little chorus if you were brought up in the Salvation Army Sunday School all those years ago. And it invites Jesus to come into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in to stay, dwell, remain. Let's make this permanent 
let's get this relationship up and running. Come in today, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And then the second part of this little chorus is, uh, enter, enter right into my heart, Lord, enter now. Now, theologically, we know that um, the idea of Jesus coming jihad is a picture of a reality, but it's about inviting Jesus to be part of our lives. And I want to invite you this morning to take time as this music plays and the words appear on the screen to invite the risen Jesus to set your hearts on fire, to come and dwell and stay with you. Stay with us, Lord, because the day is coming to an end and the evening is near. And Jesus responds to the invitation and he will come and he will stay remain, abide with you, and set your heart on fire. So powerful words that we heard from Simon this morning and we give glory to God for those words and we simply pray, Lord, come and abide with us, come and stay with us. And for those of you that um, have asked the Lord Jesus to come and abide with you this morning, we'd love to hear about it. We'd love for you to share, to be for us to be the first people that you confess with your mouths and with your hearts that you have come to know who Jesus is. So please drop us a line, 
via our Facebook page, through Messenger or through text or even on the YouTube comments. We'd love to know that you have asked Jesus to be your friend. But for those of you who are still thinking about it, ask Jesus just to come and stay, to abide with you. I'd like to pray with you. I'd like to give thanks and ask God's blessing to be upon you. Father, we thank you that you have promised to be with us always. We thank you that you gave us Jesus to travel this road with us. We thank you for the Easter experience of last week, but we thank you for the hope and the promise that you still continue to walk with us regardless of what we go through. Jesus, you have promised that you would be with us always, even to the end of the age. And Father, I just want to pray for those who have uh, witnessed this meeting today, who have watched this meeting, who have heard your words, that they will hear that promise that you are with them and that you are knocking at the door, not just for them to be your friend, but for you to be theirs, for you to love them, for you to show them just how precious they are to you. And Father, over the coming week, we pray that you will give your people signs of how much you love them. I pray that through this week, you will show your goodness and your favour towards them for them to see just how precious and honoured they are to you. Father, thank you for the word this morning. May we take it, may we digest on it and may we start living it out that you love us and therefore we are to go on and love others. Thank you. Thank you for all that you're doing, Father, and thank you for all that you are going to do. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you so much for joining us in worship this morning and we pray that God will richly bless you. Stay on, you're going to absolutely love the next piece of worship music that is taking place. Opportunity to get up and to dance and to praise and to sing. And look out in the next few coming weeks for an absolutely wonderful worship extravaganza that we are going to be able to share together in. We'll let you know when that is coming. But have a great week and the Lord bless you. Jesus is risen. He's risen.